Podcast. We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors Podcast, with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. So welcome back to the next episode, episode 131 of The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors, with myself, Jackie Jones, and the wonderful Mr. Bob Cook. And what we're going to be talking about this week is, are some feelings more acceptable than others in the therapy room? Oh, what a wonderful topic. And when you said 131, it was like counting down to Christmas. Yes. <laughs> no, I was used to do that as a kid, you know. Well, nearly the Christmas, we're going to get down, and we used to count down at Christmas. So when you said 131, that's what it reminded me of. My grandson does that. How many more sleeps is it? That's what he asks. He works it out by how many sleeps there are left. <laughs> no, I don't know how many sleeps there are to the podcast we're doing, but 131 is a good topic. Good, uh, sorry, good number, as is this topic. Yes. Are some feelings more acceptable than others in the therapy room? What do you think? I'd like to say no. Okay, well, that's it. That's the end of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Until there, next that's time. <laughs> See, I think it's no and yes. Yeah, me too. That's why I, there was a long pause after it, because I'm saying I'd like to think no, but I'm sure that there are ones where I'm thinking yes. Okay. So I'm a developmental psychotherapist, as you all know. So I always think, always think about how the past informs the present. Yeah how our script gets paid out in the present. And it's the same here. Yes. So, um, what, when you were brought up, Jackie, were the feelings which were more acceptable than others? Yes. To display, to express? There was pretty much one that was okay to show, and that was happy. Anything else wasn't that good. <laughs> yes, yeah, so in your household, so, well, in my house, I, certainly what could not be shown is anger uh, at all. Um, Fear was another one that I wasn't okay to show. Mm. So so you would have got recognition for so, if this is right, I don't make assumption, but recognition for showing or expressing certain feelings, but not others. Absolutely, yeah. And that was the same for me as well. Yeah. I think it's the same for most people. Yeah. And therefore, I think pre therapists themselves have their own scripts. Now, yeah. hopefully they've done a bit of, you know, quite a bit of therapy themselves. Um, but still, I think if you've been programmed a certain way, then unconsciously you may promote certain feelings and not others. Yeah. According to the script. And the same for clients who come in. An interesting thing I always thought about as a therapist is what emotions were missing from the client's repertoire, if you like. Yeah. So if they were always happy, I'd always think, oh, I wonder where all the other emotions have gone. Now, very, very rarely was that the case, but if it was, it nearly always, did, of course, was a defense systems. If somebody was angry all the time, Think, oh, what else happened to sadness and fear and XXX? So, and I'd usually point it out to clients, by the way, whereas I, I understand the way you're expressing some of these feelings. And I've been thinking about maybe some missing emotions here. Yeah. I sometimes get the feeling with, with clients, not all clients, but some clients, I get a sense that they're angry or frustrated but they're not, I'm not seeing it. <laughs> so I will, I will quite often ask a client in the early days, if you get angry at me, how will I know? Good question. Because I think it's, it's a situation where I'm not sure they would authentically show me anger or regression. So, yeah. Mm. And let's take that as an example. And it's a very, common one that you're talking about that 
uh, the clients have usually programmed themselves through their own script to not express the anger or aggression that you're talking about because it's not been the way, you know, it's been how the family of origin or significant other people have scripted them. So then they, when they come to see you, they're following that script. Yeah. That's very common what you're talking about. And of course, you know, a really important question to ask clients is what, what was the common feeling that you could express when you were in childhood? And they'll say X. So then yeah. you know that B was, was not only not allowed, but you probably wouldn't see it in the therapy room. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's a, again, what I do is to let them know that, you know, all emotions are okay. All feelings are okay. It's what we do with them that can sometimes cause problems. For me, anger is a really good emotion because it motivates me to make a change. Mm, mm, mm. You know, so, so again, talking about different emotions and how we can express them and what they can do I think helps clients. You're absolutely right. Full stop. Oh, good. And I was waiting for a but then. <laughs> and I think most most clients project onto their therapist um, some sort of important caretaker figure. So they're permissions or what they think and feel is so important to the client mm. so they often project onto the therapist well this is not acceptable yeah so if you ask most clients well you can experiment with it and say uh or, th or we could even talk about now probably better how many clients actually express anger towards you or express frustration anger irritability with the therapist well i probably would say not many at the beginning yeah maybe as they feel safer they dare to and then you talk to many clients who've been on the in their therapy journey saying well i never did yeah so when you talk about what's acceptable there's two parts to it one is what the clients projects onto the therapist as what is acceptable or not is often x and then therapist's own history which unconsciously plays out around what's acceptable or not acceptable yeah but two sides to it yeah it's a really interesting conversation to to explore personally you know outside of the therapy room yeah yeah well uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Well, you take christmas for example so different therapists take Christmas different ways so not many therapists will go work on Christmas day yeah but many therapists work up to Christmas Eve and may even come back in between Christmas and New Year but you might get some therapists who expect their clients or get unhappy actually if the clients are not joyful over Christmas because uh, I'll tell you why that is um, and it's often modelled that way. In other words, when the client goes into that type of therapist's room, there'll be 10 to 1, there'll be Christmas decorations up. There'll be, I won't say far as a Christmas tree, but there'll be certainly a lot of geniality. And they will probably, if you explore it further into the therapist's history, they probably have had Christmases where geniality and decorations and everything else was the norm in fact dictated that way yeah. so they map that out with their clients then you get some therapists who have the opposite types of christmases so they don't have any decorations up <laughs> they don't expect their clients at all to be happy and they and they are then exploring what Christmas meant for them because they expect and project onto the clients that they had a miserable time at Christmas. Yeah. 
it, it again, it it just never ceases to amaze me how the different layers that there are with all of us. Do you know what I mean? That you don't even pay attention to. My 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 personal history around Christmas. My mum, she's she's in her eighties, bless her, and she doesn't like Christmas. There we are. Yeah, and her favourite saying is something bad always happens at Christmas. And I once asked her, how many Christmases have you had that have been bad? And her answer was, I can remember this one. And it's like one out of 80 odd Christmases was a bad one. And yet it's overshadowed every other Christmas that she's ever had. So our history yeah. script dictates how we are around Christmas. Yeah. And often, it, and it's the same with feelings. Our script dictates as therapists and as clients, as what we see acceptable in terms yes. of expression of feelings in our history. Yeah. Now, I hope, you know... Because certainly... they're all so sorry, Rob, for butting in, that when a, a, a certain feeling is expressed that we feel compelled or the urge to respond in a certain way as well Could you say because that... of our past... Oh. Yes. That if somebody's me... upset or, or scared or angry, whatever it is, that, again, because of our own scripted stuff, that we feel compelled to respond or react in a certain way. Yeah, I think most therapists and people who come to be therapists, social workers, probation workers, they come from a often a compulsive rescuing place and they need to have their own therapy to reflect on that and at least understand that so they don't spontaneously be driven by that by their own history yeah yeah which again is something that i check in with clients do you know what i mean yeah otherwise the sorts of feelings those the sorts of feelings that they would see compulsive caretakers or what i've just talked about here would um almost how can i put this uh be looking for what is acceptable is the real angst you know the what's hidden behind the sort of uh, happiness or the facade or whatever it is so they'd be really after feelings which perhaps sadness fear anger etc but they may in that search by the way and not consciously not consciously and this doesn't always have to be the case anyway doesn't give permission for the client to actually have be joyful or happy mm. because those things are not what the, the person the therapist is searching or or uh you know encourage the client to get to yeah which again is really interesting bob because the the emotions that we all have but you wouldn't maybe expect a therapy session to be joyful and humorous and no. enjoyable there's yeah. a certain, you know, thought that it needs to be deep and dark and meaningful and every conversation has to take us to somewhere. That's right. And that's, you're perfectly correct. Uh, I don't know how, I don't know the percentage of people who came through my doors had traumatic histories, but probably yeah. most had difficult times. And so I can understand that whole picture you've just painted. And at the same time, to not give permissions for the, Time to come out of the toilet bowl for <laughs> you know, once to. I, I love that phrase. <laughs> yeah, to see the light and spread, you know, to feel the sun on their backs. Yeah. The great shame. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It again, it, it's a really interesting topic that you know, would they feel like they'd got the money's worth if? If they hadn't gone to those toilet bowl places, I don't know. I think I think it's okay going there. I'm not saying don't go there because most clients have had difficult histories, so I yeah. understand that. However, if the therapist, you know, unconditioned, uh, sorry, unconsciously or whatever it is, um, keeps the client too long in those places, yeah, I don't think it's much there's not much space for a relief mm. and for there may not be 
a uh, permission for the the client to take a break or to see the daylight. Yeah, absolutely. And I th I think I think that would be a shame because it would mean there'd be no lightness. The clients wouldn't feel the sun on their backs either. Yeah. They, there will always be that sort of intensity to the therapy sessions, which in one way I understand, and another way I always like to bring some lightness, or I did to 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 the therapy sessions I had with clients. So I would start if it was a group, always start the group off with good news, yes. something and good uh, individually the same actually. Yeah. So even though we go to intense places, I'd always be thinking about. Well, let's make sure there's some lightness here somewhere. And sometimes there may not be the space for that, and that's all right. And we still need to promote, I think, the exploration of joy somewhere in this. Yeah. Yeah, because to be a well-rounded human being, we've got to be able to express the whole rafter of emotions and like you touched on it earlier on about you know giving our clients permission oh. to explore them all and you know for some clients it, it potentially is a safe space for them to explore and to try out emotions that maybe they've not been able to show in other places I can remember in our training you know and when we, we were doing you know like role play or whatever it is that you know people I've done it with clients myself where they've thrown a cushion up the corridor and you know got I've fired them up even to let go of whatever it is that they're holding on to mm -hmm. no yeah I look, look what you've just said I totally agree with I mean that's why um that's a successful therapist has to provide that safe harbor yeah Otherwise, there's nowhere for a person to uh, experiment or to feel safe with uh, yeah. expressing some of these feelings that they were perhaps never allowed to express and to have a recorrective experience is so important. Yeah, which again kind of links into the importance of therapists having their own therapy to work through whatever it is that they're, because we've all got a past. You know, and if, if somebody showing anger or frustration brings up something for us as therapists, then we need to be able to to work through that. I agree with you. Definitely. Yeah. Emotions are complicated and deep rooted. And what what, you know, we feel is acceptable to show and not, you know, and, and then it goes into for me that whole realm of you know, guilt and shame when we do show certain emotions that are out of our script or comfort zone. Yeah, you're right. And my wife would, I don't know what she'd say for the next sentence I'm going to say. I know my daughter would say, um, but I watch a lot of reality TV programs and people say, why do you watch these, Bob? I mean, the most, I say, they're the most facile things and you're supporting this and you're supporting that. And that's all true at one level. Um, maybe you could even call it a guilty pleasure by mine. But what I like about watching all these things is exactly what we're talking about here. And that is how the scripts are played out. Yeah. And enacted out with a collection of, you know, people. Now, there yes. might be a selected collection of people, and it's interesting. Yeah. Now, that makes sense because that's why I'm a therapist. The problem with it is some of the political stuff I don't really agree with at all, so I shouldn't really support watching of these things. <laughs> from a therapeutic point of view and curiosity and why I became a therapist, it all makes sense. But you will see on those programmes exactly what you've just talked about here, and that is what they feel they're allowed to express and what they feel they aren't allowed to express and what feelings are, in inverted commas, okay, and what feelings aren't, in inverted commas, okay. So yeah. they're fascinating programmes to watch from that point of view. I should, I was a politics lecturer at one time in my life, so really I shouldn't watch half of them. <laughs> so, I, so people listening to these podcasts, 
please just uh, forgive me on that sense. <laughs> I, I think it's good. I, I can remember when I was going through my training, looking at you know, particularly the soaps and, and you know, yeah. looking at like a drama triangle and who was the rescuer yeah. and who was the persecutor and yeah. the, the really good, you know, as a people watching experiment to work out different ego states and everything. I very, I was before I became a therapist. Uh, anyway, I was I was always a people watcher. Yeah, and I really, from a point of view, for lots of reasons, by the way, but not just perhaps psychotherapeutic ones. But I always, you know, got very curious. I think I've always been very curious, which is, I think, a very good quality for a therapist to have. Yeah, I think for me as well, with feelings you know I one of my personality types is that I'm a bit paranoid so it's really important for me to be able to work out what people are feeling to know whether it's safe or not safe in certain situations so I've got a bit of a radar sometimes with you know if if a person's not being congruent with what they're feeling and what they're showing body language wise so I I think sometimes I can challenge my clients on I'm getting a sense that you're feeling X, Y, or Z, but I'm not seeing that. What's going oh, yeah. on? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good, that's a good uh, gift to have. I Sometimes. Think. Yeah, well, there's always the side <laughs> of it, but I think it's useful for you be able to, for you to be able to call on that. Yeah. Yeah. It just opens up another topic of conversation in the therapy room, I think, around feelings and what's acceptable and what's not. I think they're marvellous discussions to have, and if you don't have them, it's a shame, so that's great. Yeah. Well, Bob, thank you for that. What thank we're going to be looking at next time is working with parental interjects in the therapy room. So we've worked with parent. We've done a podcast on the parent interview. We've had done a podcast on. Have we done a podcast on this? Probably not. I, I, even if we haven't, it's a really good one to talk about. Yes. Well, as you know, as a. Well, we might change our minds before then, Bob. Knowing you. <laughs> I give all these titles and this, that, the other. You know, and I probably say it's a hundred times. So there we go. But but I think a lot of this. A lot of all the things we talk about may does or may go back to scripts and yeah. how they're enacted out in the present. So I am a, a great believer in script theory, which is again what we're talking about here, and we will be talking about the next one. But we are, but stepping back from that, um, it is a really, really important podcast. So I, I do import, you know, I do hope people come and listen to us. Yeah. As we I head to Christmas. We, yes. Talking about parental interjects, what about Father Christmas? Well, there you go. They, they, we, <laughs> you always say that that's part of therapy, isn't it? That they yeah. have the Father what sort Christmas. Of Father complex. Christmas. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, what sort of parental interject do we have around Father Christmas? Yeah. Interesting. Mm. Especially with my big white beard. Yes, yes, definitely. We we might need to wear hats on the run up to Christmas, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> okay, until next until then. next time. Yeah, bye bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Therapy Show, behind closed doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode. <laughs>